If you've played on Board Game Arena and you have a premium account, you know that after every game you get statistics. The amount of statistics you get will vary from game to game, but for Ark Nova it's very comprehensive. Today we're going to look at those statistics for the current top 20 players in Ark Nova. We'll compare the averages of all the players against those in the top 20 and see what the people in the top 20 do differently to help them win. We're going to start by looking at one of the most interesting topics I think, which is which action cards these players upgrade. Just a note when we're looking at these averages, the average of every player is going to include player counts of 3 and 4 player games, possibly single as well, I'm not sure how the stats are recorded exactly. But for most players, not all, but for most players in the top 20 this will only be at a 2 player count. You can obviously only upgrade a maximum of 4 cards per game, there's nothing too different from the top players and the and all players. They're both getting to 4 most games, maybe a couple of games where they only get to 3. But it becomes more telling when we look at the specific upgrades. You can see the average player upgrades animals 84% of the time, whereas these top players is closer to 98%. This is just telling us that animals is one of those cards that you have to upgrade most of the time, except for the 1 in 50 games where it just doesn't happen. Build is very similar, and along with cards, these are the sort of main three. Cards is a bit lower, but still 9 out of 10 games is getting upgraded by these top players. Sponsors and association are where things start to differ a little bit. One thing you're going to notice when looking at all these stats is just how viable a lot of different playstyles are. Sponsors in particular, among these players, we have the number one player BDW who upgrades it in 58% of games, compared to rank number three player BBB who only upgrades at 8% of the time, and there's all sorts of values in between. The vast majority of top players still prefer upgrading Associate, it's at 74%, but basically what we can conclude from this is these are the three main upgrades that you'll do each game, and then for the last upgrade you either decide between Sponsors and Associate. It's very rare that you'd upgrade both in the same game. One very interesting player in this regard is Tomoaki. They upgrade Association in every single game they play and Sponsors in half, while they actually decide not to upgrade cards most of the time. This is quite unusual compared to everyone else around them, and I did some checking. They only play at a 4 player count, but they're doing very well, so if you do like to play at 4 player then this could be something to look at as well. Next we're going to look at all the different icons you can get in your zoo. Starting with the continents, we can see there's a pretty clear top 1 continent. The average player realises this, the top players realise this, Asia is just far and away the continent that you're going to end up with the most. If you're picking a partner zoo and you don't really know which one to pick, Asia is a safe bet. Second in that regard is the Americas at 2.55 icons per game, with Africa slightly behind, and then Europe and Australia are pretty substantially behind. Of course this is going to depend on the conservation projects that are dealt out, but just in a vacuum the order would go Asia, America, Africa, Europe, Australia. It's worth noting that Europe and Australia just have less animals in them in general, so the gap between Europe and Africa is probably not that large. Looking at the animals themselves, we can see just in general that the top players end up with more tags in their zoo. This is mostly going to be due to efficiency. The top players can get out more animals. Uh, except for primates, which the average player overvalues compared to the top players. Not by much, but a little bit. The most undervalued type of animal by the average player is birds. And that's not really surprising. I think there are very few weak birds in the game. Myself, it seems that I overvalue them a little bit. Petting zoo animals are another debate. We can see among the top players that there are all sorts of different averages here. Even among the top three. BBB averages 0.93 petting zoo animals per game, whereas JD are only 0.4. Uh, He's not the biggest petting zoo hater though, over here at number 20 Darcelmore actually averages less petting zoo animals at 0.29 than other top players like Melon Strawberry and Kim SSK average over 1 per game. So whether you value them or not, you can be successful either way. The water and rock icons are probably more telling than people realise. As I discussed in the top value animals video, if an animal has requirements like rock or water, it means it's discounted and it gives you good value. So it's not surprising that the top players average more water and more rock icons meaning that the animals they play are better value in general. Science icons is kind of hard to read into. The averages are all around the same. This will be more of a playstyle thing. If you're upgrading sponsors, then I guess you're more likely to play more science icons because sponsors are where the majority of them are. Although interestingly, we can see that Tomoaki, who upgrades sponsors in 50% of games, averages the least amount of science icons by a long way, but this could also be due to 4-player games and getting less universities or something. 
It's not really surprising that top players are finishing the game in less turns. This is mostly due to them being efficient with their actions. Number of breaks treat is not really relevant to compare against all players because of the different player counts, but it is noteworthy that the top 3 players are triggering more breaks than the top 20 players on average, by quite a lot as well. Again it can also be a playstyle thing, but it shows that triggering the break is not that bad. These players are triggering more than half the breaks in their average game. Triggering the end of the game, well this is not really surprising either. If you're reaching 100 points before your opponent, you're setting yourself up to win. The very best players are doing it over 80% of the time, and most people on this list are well over 70%. The breakdown between appeal and conservation points is not too noteworthy. The top three are scoring more points in less turns, which is quite impressive, and nothing too noteworthy in reputation either. The different types of actions that the players are using to get there. The first thing that we can see is that the average player, and myself included, are building way too much. Building is an action where you're essentially spending money to get no points or very few points in return, so it's something that you want to be doing as little as possible. The top 20 players are averaging half a build action less per game, which I think is quite significant. Maybe more significant is the number of cards actions that they're taking, and that makes sense as well. Cards is another action where you're not actually scoring any points from it. Especially late game, you don't want to be doing the cards and build action very much. X tokens and money. The stat I'm most interested in here is gaining an X token instead of using an action. Somewhat counterintuitively, we can see that the top players are more willing to get an X token from an action than the average player. Particularly when I first started the game, I was thinking if you're gaining an X token, it's just a completely wasted turn. But the counterpoint to that is, if you're using the action on something that's not going to help you very much anyway, like building an enclosure you don't need, or drawing cards knowing you'll have to discard some anyway, you might as well just get an X token instead. But we can also see some different playstyle between the top 1 and top 2 players. BDW really does not like gaining X tokens instead of an action, whereas JD is more willing to do it, nearly twice per game. We can see Sagera's here in 10th place, even doing it 2.6 times per game. Money gain for the whole game is fairly even. I think the biggest difference here is money spent on donations. What this is saying is that the average player is overspending for donations, particularly early when maybe they can't afford it. Or late game, even if you're trading 12 money for one conservation point, it's not the best deal in the world. Uh, this is telling me that I spend way too much on donations, which I should look at changing. This stat is money spent for playing cards from reputation range. This would be part of the reason that the top players are taking less cards actions. They're just playing directly from the display, although it does look like I'm slightly overspending in that regard as well. These are the association statistics. The amount of released animals per game kind of surprised me. The top 20 players will release substantially more animals than the average player, but even the top 3 players release substantially more than the top 20 players. BDW in particular averages 1.3 releases per game, which is the most out of anyone in the top 20. And I can see why it's so efficient. You're always going to get a net positive in terms of conservation points versus appeal. But then you also get the enclosure back to reuse on another animal, which is going to save you building actions in the long run. That's one thing that I definitely need to improve on. I have a lower amount of released animals than every single person in, in the top 20, and even less than the average player. The other stats I don't think are too interesting. We can see that the top three players are donating less than everyone else on average, but this is partly due to them upgrading sponsors more often than Associate, uh, and just supporting conservation projects in general. The top three players do it more on average than the top 20 players, who do it more on average than the average player. Another little statistic that popped out at me is the amount of partner zoo association tasks that BDW takes. Every other player in the top 20 is sitting at above 2 per game. But BDW is down at 1.61, which is quite low. I guess most of the time he is busy releasing animals. It could be a small part of the reason for his success. And just before I hide these stats again, we can see that BDW actually upgrades all four of his cards much less often than everyone else, and this is partly due to not getting that second partner zoo. And finally we have the building statistics. If we remember from before, the average player spends more build actions than the top players, but somehow the top players are getting more things built. This would be partially due to the top players upgrading build more often, 99% of the time, and also because they're most likely just taking build at power 5 instead of power 1 or 2. Uh, but covering more hexes and getting a few more of those unique buildings. I'm not actually sure what counts as a unique building. I assume it's the aviary and reptile house along with sponsor cards, because I can't imagine these players are building both the aviary and reptile house in most games. 
but it also seems quite low if it's including sponsor cards, so I'm not sure on that one. But again, this is telling me that I'm building slightly too much and that's an area that I need to improve on. So these are all the stats of the top 20 Ark Nova players. I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet in the description of this video. What do you think? Are there any other conclusions we can draw from looking at these stats? Are there any interesting players that I missed out on highlighting? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.